guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing a full tune-up on my buddy's Ford Ranger. Got a list of things to do to it today. We've got plugs, wires, oil filter, change in the oil, fuel filter. So if you're new to the channel, like, comment, subscribe. We've got a lot of videos coming. So first things first, we're gonna start with I think it's spark plug. We're gonna change the spark plugs. Show you guys how to change spark plugs, do the gap on the spark plug, and change the spark plug wires. The first step is to remove these spark plug wires. And it's got little clips on them. So you squeeze the clips, pull it up. Dang, you're rolling now. You said what? Hmm? Uh... Okay, so I'm gonna do this plug wire right here. What I'm gonna do is unhook it from this little clip. It's got a little clip that holds it in. Disconnect it. And pull that off. Once you've got the spark plug wire disconnected from the coil pack at the top, up here, and you got it disconnected down there on the spark plug, pull that one wire out. Do one wire at a time. Don't pull them all off, because then you'll forget where they go and it'll be a struggle. So just do one wire at a time. So, got this wire out of there. Now we gotta get our box of wires and apply the same length and measurement. Okay guys, so I figure right now is a good time to go ahead and explain how a spark plug works for anybody who doesn't know. So, starting on the left side of the screen here, we've got the terminal. That is where the spark plug wire attaches. And the spark plug wire, supplies the current to the spark plug, which is actually quite a bit. It's anywhere from 12,000 to 45,000 volts, depending on your electrical system. And what's going on is the spark plug wire sends the power through the terminal. It goes through the ceramic insulator. We have ceramic on spark plugs because ceramic resists heat very well. So it goes through the ceramic insulator. We have a crush washer, which locks the spark plug down into place once you tighten it down into the head. You have a center electrode which supplies the positive current which is coming through your spark plug wire, through your terminal, through the length of the spark plug. Then you have your side electrode which is grounded through your head. And the gap between your side electrode and your center electrode needs to be a certain amount so that your electrical system can send the right amount of spark through it. If it's too much, then that spark can't jump that gap. That's why you have to gap spark plugs. If it's not enough, it's not enough gap. I mean, it's not going to supply enough spark to ignite the fuel air mixture in your combustion chamber. So anybody who has ever seen or actually done it themselves, you touch positive to negative on a battery and it sparks. That is actually what's going on in a spark plug. And it's controlled via your computer in your engine compartment, your ECM. Uh, it's saying send spark now at a specific time in your combustion cycle. And that's how a spark plug works. So you need to make sure you gap your spark plugs properly. That way you get the right ignition for your air fuel mixture. What we do, we take our wire that we've got and we measure it up next to the wires we've got laid out here. We go from the longest wire down to the shortest wire. That's how we lay them out. So you just lay it out and measure whichever wire is closest to the length. Some of them aren't gonna be perfect, but they're gonna be close. So our new wire there. Pretty close, that's gonna be the one. So we're gonna set our old wire off to the side. Don't mix it up. Right. Once you got your wire that goes to that plug, you wanna make sure to pull your old plug out and you just get a spark plug socket. This one is 5 8 And you take that spark plug out. Spark plugs out, inspect it. If it's destroyed. This one has got a ton of miles on it. So that's why we're doing a uh, spark plug change on it. There's another spark plug we pulled out of the other side just to compare bank one to bank two. And what you're going to do is get your new spark plugs and gap them. I'll show you how to gap them. Okay, so you get your new spark plug. I'm just going to open it and destroy the box. Pick yourself up one of these. The spark plug gapper. They were like 50 cents from an auto parts store. 
because spark plugs don't typically come gapped. You can buy some that are pre-gapped for your specific vehicle, but for the most part, they don't. And you're going to want to double check them anyways. On this vehicle, move that out of the way, it says it's an i7 Ford Ranger with a 4.0, and it says the spark plug gap should be right here. Yeah, 0.52 to 0.56. And on this gapper, it gives you measurements. Okay, so to gap a spark plug, get your gapper, and we know it needs to be at 0 0.052. And you can see right here, I don't know if you can read that. So 0.052 is where we need this to be. So what we do, we slide it in here because it goes smaller gap here, and as you spin it around, it gets to a larger gap. Take a smaller gap, work it around until it stops, and it's at 0.55, which means we're going to need to knock this down a little bit. So to do that, pull the gapper out of there, and very gently. Take your spark plug and just tap it on the body of the truck or the radiator support. Very lightly. Then you check the gap again. And now it's at 0.43. So we knocked it down too far. So to fix that, you take this little hole that's in this, you place it over the arm, and you tip it back. Just a little bit. And then you check it again. And now it's at 0.45. So we still got a little ways to go. Okay, so right there is between 0 0.50 and it's at 0.53. So that's right in specification. That's where I'm going to leave it. So once you got your spark plug fully gapped to where you need it, some people take a little bit of anti-seize and they just run a little bit around the threads so that whenever you go to take it out next time, it's not seized into place. So you don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. Just like that. And that's enough because it'll walk around the threads as you thread it in. And then you install it into the truck. And you got to do that with all of your spark plugs. So take your newly gap spark plug and put it back in the same place you took it out of. Spark plug is now installed down there. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of dark. New spark plug is down there, but finger tight. Now you take your socket and tighten it down. And you don't want to go too tight on this. Now that you got it down with your hand, you just go about a half turn more, and that's it. Since the spark plug is tightened down, you take your spark plug wire, your new one. And what we're going to do is we have some connector grease right here. I'm just going to put a little dab inside here. That's enough to keep it from corroding and sticking to the spark plug when you go take it off the next time. Same thing with this end, just a little tiny bit. So this end now has some on it. I'll show you how little of amount I mean. I don't know if you can see that. Just a small amount. You don't need very much. It just stops it from sticking to it. So in the spark plug boot, that's the amount that we put in. Just a little tiny bit. A little pea size amount. And then it helps it helps it slide onto the spark plug and it keeps it from sticking again. Alright, so just reinstall your new spark plug wire. And I like to start on the spark plug. So you just push it over it and you should hear a click. It was a really faint click, but it did click. You'll feel it. Reinstall all your holders, pick it up, and plug it back into where you got it from. This goes into the back one. And you should hear a click on this one too. And that one's installed. Now we're going to go through and pull the rest of the spark plug wires off, all the spark plugs out, and we will show you gapping all the other spark plugs.
get all the spark plugs out. We have all of them set here in order that they came out. And you're going to want to inspect them to see if there's anything wrong with them. But you can also, if you want to, you can check the gaps on the ones you take out. See what they're sitting at. Like on this truck, whoever did the last spark plug change did not gap them at all. All the gaps are all over the place. They're not correct. So these gaps are all wrong on these, which explains why it is idling rough. And, I mean, this truck's just in need of a tune-up. But once you get all the spark plugs out, you're going to have to gap all of your new spark plugs, which we have sitting down here. Gapper, right here. Spark plugs. And then install them. All right. So now you're just going to go through and gap all of your spark plugs. Hmm? I'm just going to... Dead. So now we're just going to take the spark plugs and install them into the spark plug cylinders. Get all the plugs installed and all the wires installed. The next step is going to be to start it. So my buddy's going to start it real quick and make sure that it runs, make sure there's no misfires, make sure everything is good. So he's going to start it up for us real quick. And he's going to let it run for a couple of seconds. As long as there's no misfires, which there isn't, if there was a misfire, you can see the engine shaking back and forth, and it's not. So spark plugs and wires are now installed successfully. If you guys found this video helpful, go ahead and leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. If you're new, be sure to click that bell notification. Thanks, guys.